Good morning. Good morning. It's Morning Devils with Pastor Jen. And this morning, I have two very special guests with me. One, uh, Brother Greg, who's a part of the Barry for Methodist Church. And for the first time ever here on our Morning Devils, we have Superintendent Ahmed from Ghana. And so welcome to both of you this morning. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Uh, good here is good afternoon. <laughs> yes. And so this <laughs> month, February, mm -hmm. is uh, the annual general meeting for uh, the Ghana Mission in Ghana, the For Methodist Ghana Mission. And so we thought it would be a great idea to hear what's going on in Ghana. And there's some huge news. We are mm -hmm. in the process of celebrating. Ghana, the Ghana mission becoming its provisional, provisional conference. And so tell us a little bit about what that means, Superintendent. Well, thank you very much, uh, Pastor Jane and then Brother Greg. Uh, what that means, the Free Methodist Church becoming a provisional conference in Ghana, what that means is growth. What that means is doing things differently. What that means is actually having a new perspective of the church in Ghana. And what that means is thanksgiving, appreciation to the Lord and to the Barry Church and the church in Canada for all the support. That is what it means. Right. And so uh, Greg and I have actually been to Ghana. I've been there twice. Greg, tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the Ghana mission. Oh, wow. Uh, we, uh, well, I retired and moved from Calgary to Barrie. And very shortly after we uh, arrived in Barrie, uh, at that time, Pastor John Mark made an announcement that a team would be going to Ghana uh, so that would be February 2012. And when Lori and I were driving home, she said to me, are you going to go on that trip? You've always wanted to go. Mm. And I said, well, I'll think about it. <laughs> and so we talked about it. I prayed about it, prayed about it quite a bit, spoke to Pastor John Mark. And so in February 2012, I went to Ghana for my first trip mm. and the moment the moment that we landed in Accra and within an hour of meeting a half a dozen different people involved I fell in love with mm. the people in Ghana the people in the Free Methodist Church in Ghana I just I felt at home mm. and that might sound silly but I felt at home with those people from the minute I arrived Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went six times, six mm -hmm. years in a row, I went to uh, Ghana and every one of the trips was wonderful. I've traveled with Superintendent Ahmed through almost all of Ghana, all the way up to the border of Burkina Faso, a neighboring country, and visited almost, I think I visited all the churches at that time. Yes. And uh, I was really focused on helping them put in place some of the structures they would need to be an effective organization, uh, helping their board of administration function well, things like that. Uh, working in conjunction with uh, Bishop Keith Alfred at the time. And, uh, but the important thing for me was always, I just loved meeting with those people. I never mm -hmm. once mm -hmm. went to a town went to a new church, went anywhere that I didn't feel that I was at home, mm -hmm. that I was with people who loved me as much as I love them. Mm -hmm. So I have a very warm, wonderful feeling. And I really felt that I was doing the work that God wanted me to do there. And that it was wonderful partnering with such wonderful Christian people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and I, I felt the way I've been twice, and so I too have been up to the, the northern part of Ghana and felt so welcomed by every single person that I met, and I got excited because of what God was doing, and it just seemed like every year he was doing something 
greater. Yeah. Like there never seemed uh, to be, I want to say, a pause on the mission. Like every year uh, there was new churches being planted, new people being ordained, both male and female, uh, both young and old, widows and singles. Like I loved hearing the stories. And so superintendent, would, I'm sure there's lots of stories that you could share with us that would help and yeah. encourage us, but also just, you know, give glory to the Lord. And I know that the theme for you from this year, for this year is from the book of Revelation, but declaring that he is Lord. And we see that when we see what's happening in Ghana with, with respect to the Free Methodist uh, mission, we see God moving in powerful ways. So we would love for you to share with us just a, a few stories of how God is moving. Well, thank you very much. Um... Let me begin by maybe telling you how I got myself involved in the Free Methodist Church. Yeah, I, together with uh, Joseph Sedu, used to fellowship in the same church called the Evangelical Church of Ghana. Actually, I came to know the Lord through Joseph Sedu. He mentored me, took me to school. He did almost everything, virtually everything for me to become a, a, a pastor and everything. So he left Ghana, came to Canada to study. And then he came into contact with the Free Methodist Church, ended up working with the Free Methodist Church. So he called me and told me about the Free Methodist Church and how wonderful the church was. And uh, the encouragement to have the Free Methodist Church in Ghana, he believes will, will, will help our country. So, I, well, I said, fine. We looked at it. I asked him to send me the <laughs> I asked him to send me the the constitution of the Free Methodist Church. He sent it, I read it, and I felt no, this is where I want to belong. Personally, I want to belong to a place where there is freedom, where everybody is allowed to use his or her gift, and where everybody is valued and respected. So when I read the constitution, that was what I saw. Uh, about the Free Methodist Church. I said, okay, we'll give it a try. So we started planting some churches in the mid part of Ghana. We call it the Brung Ahafo region. That is the Techiman going to the north area. So we started in Techiman and then in Kuransa. We planted four churches. Then after planting these four churches and we're doing well, we now told uh, Joseph that, look, we wanted to launch the Free Methodist Church in Ghana or inaugurate it in Ghana. So when we gave him this news, he now contacted then, I think it was Bishop Key and then uh, um, Dan Sheffield. And they said, oh no, <laughs> we already we have a Free Methodist Church in Ghana. <laughs> we said, well, why is it? We don't know of any Free Methodist Church in Ghana. So if you can give us uh, the direction of contact to them. So Bishop, I believe it was Dan Sheffield at that time, sent us the direction, the contact. Then I have to travel from Techiman, which is about seven hours drive to Accra. I traveled to Techiman to meet with uh, Reverend Tete, who also started the Free Methodist Church in 1998 that we didn't know. In fact, ours was in 2002 when we were starting this. So, but I came to Accra to see them. I think that was somewhere in 2010. At that time, we have started the churches and now wanted to launch. So when I came, I met with him. And then he also said, yeah, the Free Methodist Church. I took the news back to my team. And I said, well, that's a Free Methodist Church in Ghana. So what do, we, what do they think? And they said, well, they want us to go solo because they didn't want us to be merged with any Free Methodist Church. Because uh, it's like when we came, we only had a, one, the Coligono Church, and then Dan Soman was coming up. So they had two, and we thought we had four. So why should we go and walk <laughs> to bed? That was what they thought. I said, no, once it's a Free Methodist Church, we can't afford to have two Free Methodist Churches in Ghana. So we should rather agree and come together. The team agreed. So finally, I came back to Charles again, and then I said, well, we wanted to merge, come together, and work. 
So in 2011, uh, the church in Canada, I think led by Barry and some other brethren came from Canada, brought us together. That was how we met in 2011 to become the one free Methodist church in Ghana. So that, that, that was how I came, or I, I got myself involved in the free Methodist church. So when we met, obviously, uh, Reverend Tete was the superintendent. He continued to be the superintendent until 2013, when we had an election and I was elected as a superintendent. And since 2013 until now, I have been the superintendent, waiting for somebody to take over. <laughs> yeah, so that is how the free method is. I got myself in the, uh, involved in the free method shape. Now, when we met, when we met the free method is, I, I work with the Bible League and I still work with the Bible League. Uh, at that time, I was stationed in Techuma. God will have it. I was transferred from Techiman to Accra. In fact, against my will, I didn't want to come to Accra. Because <laughs> I love being in Techiman. It's a cool place. I mean, you don't have all the noise and the hustles in Techiman. So I wanted to be there. <laughs> and God brought me to Accra. So when he brought me to Accra, then in 2010, I have to plant a church because I didn't want to kind of go and take over or want to pastor another church. Even, yeah, we didn't even have so many of the free Methodist churches in Accra then. We only have the Collegono and then the Dansoma that were uh, the societies. Uh, Kasim was also coming up before we went to, where it was after Ivy came into the scene that we planted the Kasua one. So when I came to Accra, I have to plant a church. And uh, that one again, Joseph Seydoux encouraged me to do it. Because it was the first time I was going to plant a church all alone. All this while I've been planting the churches in the main sector with a team. But now in Accra, I have to do it all alone. So I was kind of scared and afraid. So, but Joseph Seydoux said, no, no, you can do it. Go ahead. On the 7th, uh, January 10th. That, that day, I, 2010, I believe it was Sunday, I gathered my family and two others. We were seven on that day, seven on the 7th <laughs> January 2010. And we started the church I pastor now, which is the Kwabenya uh, branch. So we planted that church, and out of that, we planted uh, the one in uh, Media. So that is what happened. It is just God doing his own thing, and me sometimes try to run away but encourage to follow <laughs> i love yeah. i love how you said it's just god doing his own thing yes. right just like you yes. said this was touchman was nice you enjoy touch yeah. like greg and i have both been to accra and it is yeah. very busy and it takes a yeah. long time to get across town and yes. and you can't be in a rush to go anywhere um yeah yeah <laughs> but the fact that that is where god called you to because at that yeah. point that really was the heart of free methodism in yeah. ghana there was most of the churches were in accra and then things yeah. just sort of like you said started spreading out from there but that yeah. was not that was not the story that you thought god had called you on he had a totally no. different plan yeah yeah yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, so when I was elected, I uh, was elected and at the time we had about three, including what, the one I planted here, societies in Accra. And then uh, we had the uh, Techiman one, uh, no, Techiman two and then Kransa two. So it was like we had about seven uh, churches or societies then when I was elected to be the superintendent. Now, there is something I left out. When we planted a church in, 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 in Techiman, some of the pastors, when we agreed to merge, actually left because they didn't want us to kind of be merged, but to be a separate free Methodist church. But the good news is that that pastor today is actually coming back to the free Methodist. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, so uh, we had about 
five or six uh, free Methodist churches when I was elected as a superintendent. And the only parcel of land we had was the Coligono College land. All these places were just either in classrooms or uh, fellowshipping in someone's parcel of land. But by the grace of God today, it is only the Accra churches, uh, Coligono, and uh, Dansoman. Coligono is now on the college land where they fellowship now. Dansoman is yet to have a place of worship. And then uh, we have one at Top Hill, also a place of worship. And then uh, Mamprobi, a place of worship. They, they don't have it. We are yet looking for. But apart from that, all these other churches uh, all have acquired, we've been able to acquire a parcel of land that some of them have started developing and some are yet to develop. So if you look at now, currently, societies that we have, we have 24 societies. Oh, good. 24 wow. societies. Yeah. There's an and answer then, to prayer. Yes. <laughs> 24 societies that have their own parcel of land, apart from the Accra three Accra churches that I've talked about. And the Lord has been so good. And when we talk about growth, I, I still want to use last year's growth. We were still at 2,721 members of the uh, church of Fremantle. 2,721. 2,700. 2,721. Wow. That is wow. the membership of the Fremantle. But this year, it will be more than that. This year, we suspect it will be more than 3,000. Because we are now gathering the first report. So that is what the Lord has done. And in terms of infrastructure, yeah, that is where we are coming up. Gradually, the media church, they have built their own auditorium. Tano Boase, they are trying to do that. Uh, we say here, we have it. Uh, in fact, all of the societies are kind of trying to build something. Tamale, they have it. Uh, we saw that one. So God has been good, and we are moving. Churches are being planted. Now our target is to have a regional church. That is all the regions must have a free Methodist church. That has been our target now, what we are pursuing. Yeah. So in a nutshell, all this is the doing of the Lord. Yes. And also with your kind help, the church in Canada. Honestly, at the time I came in, without the support of Canada, I believe God could have done it, but it would have been difficult for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God wanting to ease our burden, actually continue to put that burden on the heart of the church in Canada to continue to support. So we are thankful to God. We know he did everything, but we also bless God for the church in Canada, for all the support we have received. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And to God, to God be the glory. And I'm just seeing that we're coming to the end of our time this morning, but I'd love to hear some more stories about some, <laughs> some cool God moments in Ghana. So I think we'll push pause right now. And I'm going to actually ask Greg if he would pray for, for you and the church in Ghana, and then we'll pick up things again for another time. So Greg, would you pray for Superintendent Ahmed? My pleasure. Mm. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in these wonderful stories that we hear about your work providing the fruit in Ghana. Mm. We know, Lord, that without you, none of this would have been, as, would have been achieved the way it was achieved. As Superintendent Ahmed said, yes, we would have gotten there, but it may have been much more difficult and mm -hmm. been much longer. Mm -hmm. So we are so thankful, Lord, that the work you have done and the work that you continue to do with the people in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we ask, Lord, that there be a special blessing upon Superintendent Ahmed and his family, the work that they do, the leadership that he provides to the church in Ghana. We are so very thankful. He is such a faithful servant, Lord, that we are truly thankful that he is in that position and that he continues to see you and to work with you, Lord, to achieve what God has planned for Ghana. We ask these things in thy holy name. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. thank you, uh, Brother Greg and Superintendent Ahmed for joining me uh, this morning, joining us. And so we invite everyone to tune in uh, tomorrow, probably, or next week. We're not ever really sure exactly when the next part is going to air. <laughs> but we want to say 
take what you've learned today and be encouraged and and with it knowing that god uses you to accomplish his work and take that and encourage someone else with that today so like share go outside and help your community experience christ bye thank you bye bye bye